Okay, this is 11-9 um, on um, solving equations involving square roots. All right. How many possible solutions do we have to x, <laughs> to x squared equals 9? Izzy? Two. Two. So we have, ladies, this is really hard. Okay? Can you guys not talk? Sorry. So we have two possible solutions. What are the two solutions? Uh, Tyler. Three and negative three. Three and negative three will make this a true statement. So if I, um, no, sorry about that. So if I take, all I'm going to do is use my inverse operations. So the inverse operations, what's the opposite of squaring? Yeah, taking the square root. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Now when I do that, remember we did um, the square root of x squared? What do we get when we take the square root of x squared? Yes. The absolute value of x. I have to take the absolute value of x. I feel so bad. I I'm just watching for Australia. Um, okay, so we take the absolute value of x because I can't have a negative inside there. So I always have to account for that negative value. If I do this, um, what it does is it accounts for... No. Actually, forget that. It's not that it can't have the negative inside there. Remember, we have two possible values that will work up here. So to account for that, we have to take the absolute value. To lose the absolute value bars, we set it equal to plus or minus 3. Okay? Plus or minus 3. Yes? Wait, so is the absolute value also because of that thing we talked about? Because the square root would be x to the first, and then y is Yes, the because it's an odd result that I'm getting... If that happens to be a negative value, I need something else to make it positive. So it's an odd result. So we end up with x equals plus or minus 3. So one more time. Let me go back over. I'm going to go right back over it. I see the square. So I do the opposite. Take the root. To take the square root of x, I get the absolute value of x. Square root of 9 is 3. To lose the absolute value, I have to set... The opposite, opposite side equal to both the positive and negative values. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. oh. There's one more chair up here if you want to come up, somebody. Can she get through? You're going to have to crawl through people around about. There we go. And I could probably have one person sit here. Oh, can I sit there? Estrella or one of, you, one of you girls? Jeff. All right. So now, so now, what we're doing this time, this time I have the square root. What's the opposite of that? The inverse operation of a square root. Um, Liz? Square root. I mean, finding the square. Finding the square. Okay, so find the square. So one here, one on the floor. How's that? Okay, so I'm finding the square. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm going to square it. And now, whenever I take the square of a root, what do we get? Yes. We get what's inside. They cancel each other out, squaring a root. So I'm left with x. And when I square 9, I get 81. And that's the answer. So when you have this kind of an equation, we'll have one solution. When you have x squared equals 9, we'll have two solutions. So when I have the square root of something, we'll have one solution. When I have x squared equals 9, I'm going to have two solutions. And basically, we're building up to the quadratic formula. 
Okay, this is pieces and parts of the quadratic formula. All right, so let's practice it. Ready? Okay. <coughs> now, I have the square root of x is equal to 16. So what does our intuition tell us the inverse operation is? Mark. We have to find the square root. Okay, so what would I need to do? We need to multiply everything by square. Right, we're going to have to square everything. So... Radical x squared equals what? X. x. And 16 squared equals? 256. 256. And that's our answer. <coughs> you guys get it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Easy. Okay. Um, next one, number two, <coughs> what would I do? Okay, Tyler. You would square both sides. Square both sides, and so what do I get? Somebody else other than Tyler? Right back there, Mo Moses? Yeah. Well, he said that, so now what's the next step? Y equals 49. So when I square the root, I end up with Y equals, and 7 squared is 49. You guys understanding? Yes. Okay. So now let's go on to number three. Number three. Um, per, gosh, I can't believe it's like, I, it's because I'm so flustered. Mm -hmm. Pardis. Pardis. I was going to say piranha. I don't know why. <laughs> now we got that on tape for me to put on for all of you here. Okay. Uh, Pardis. So now what do you think we would do with this one? What? We're going to square both sides. We're going to square both sides. And so what is that going to equal? Be careful. When I square a radical, what happens? Emma. You get what's inside. The square and the radical cancel out. Cancel out. So notice. When I square the radical, I'm left with what's inside. Okay? So now, as I'm squaring my 2x, what am I left with, Pardis? Right here. 2x equals 64. Perfect. Then, Isaac? Uh, then you... Uh, uh, Divide two by both sides. Both sides two. by two, and we get x equals 32. Notice, every time <coughs> when I'm taking the square root, okay. All right, so now let's try number four. Now, this is a little bit different. Every time we've done this, our radical has been alone. So what do you think we have to do now? Um, what's your name? Um, it's Erica. Erica. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know to say America. Um, okay. Uh, so you have to add one on both sides so that it's just the... Radical. Good, just adding one to both sides to get the radical alone. Once the radical is isolated, then I use my inverse operation for a square root. Now what would I do? Um, right there, Gwen. What do you think? What did I do last time when I was here? I'm going to square everything. Okay? Now, when I take the square, when I, when I square a radical, what do I get, Gwen? On this side. 5x equals 15 squared, or 15 squared is 225. Okay, now, what am I going to do next? Brenna. Dividing 5 on both sides, and x is equal to 45. Okay? Questions? Okay. So, one solution. Every time I start with the square root, I'm going to end up with one solution. Now, the one thing that... Yes? Are you... When it's like um, a binomial, uh, 
like with the square root, are you always going to add to the both sides of the equation first, or like? This is not a binomial because only this piece oh, right. is in the radical right here on number four. Okay. Be very careful of that. Only that piece is in the radical right there. So remember, that radical goes over the 5x and the 5x only, not the 1. But are you still going to always, like, no matter what, if you have another like, term at it before you take this? We always we use our rules of, of, of equations. Okay, so when I'm doing a multi-step, let's say I had 2x plus 1 equals 15. Would we undo our multiplication or adding and subtracting first? Um, 2x plus 1 equals 15. You're adding, er, yeah, the adding and subtracting. We undo the adding and subtracting first, then our multiplication, and then our square roots. Okay? All right, now the other thing to think about, well, here, I'll bring it up here. Now, in this case, when a number's next to a radical, what does that mean? Mark? It's much like something being out of the parentheses, so it's multiplying the radical. Right. So you divide each side by two. Right, it's multiplying, so the inverse of multiplication is to divide both sides by two. My twos cancel out, and I'm left with radical x plus 3 equals 5. Now, what would I do next? Something spill over there? Okay. Okay. So now, what would I do next, um, Angel? You square both sides. Squaring both sides. And you're left with x plus three equals twenty-five. X plus three equals twenty-five. Next step. Yes. You isolate. <clears throat> you isolate the variable. We isolate the variable. And we get, um, how do I do that? Oh, you subtract 3 on both sides. And we get x equals? 22. 22, perfect. Now, the one thing you have to think about, everybody, please make sure you think about this. This is very different than anything you've done before. When you have a radical, you have to make sure that that answer works in the equation. Because not like anything else before. When you've checked before, you're just checking that your work works. But in this case, we get things called extraneous solutions that don't work in the original equation. So what you need to do is check that. In fact, um, so I have 2. The answer I got was 2 times radical x plus 3 equals 10. I'm going to substitute in 2 times radical 22 plus 3 equals 10. 2 times radical 25 equals 10. And the square root of 25 is 5. That means multiplication. Is this equivalent? So that solution works. It's not extraneous. It is, in fact, a good solution. Yeah? You saying if, if you have two answers... You could possibly say, well, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Okay. All right. So next one. Yes. Wait, why did it equal 10? Oh, because that's the top. Because if I simplify going all the way down, I've, all I did was substitute in. Two remember, 2 times the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 25 is 5. 2 times 5 is 10. And this was, here was my original equation right here. Okay? So I went with that and I just substituted in. Okay. You should be writing these down. Okay? All right, sorry. Next one, what do you think we would do next? Um, right here. Close. Not subtract 5, we're doing inverse. Add 5 to both sides. Okay? So adding 5, and then I'm left with 3. Radical, notice the radical only goes over 2x plus 4. Only the radical goes over 2x plus 4. What are you doing? Um, she said if you can, she has, you can add. All right, so we added 5. Um, Phoebe, remember we said what do we do for, first? We have multiplication which is right here, 
and we had we had the multiplication here and we had the subtraction here. So we undo our adding and subtracting first. Now, what do I need to do to get rid of that, to, to isolate the radical? Lucas, divide, by three. divide both sides by 3. And now I'm left with radical 2x six. plus 4 is equal to 6. Next step, Brenna. Oh, darn it. Radical 2x plus 4, square both sides. And what am, yes, question? Couldn't you factor before and take out a 2x, 2x before? That's fine. You can do that, but it's not going to make it any faster. We, we will be doing some factoring, but we're trying to get rid of the radical. I don't know that that's going to help us to get rid of the radical because I'll be left with 2 times the quantity of x plus 4, x plus 2. So it's still not helping me to get rid of the radical. I can or I don't have to. So now I'm left with 2x plus 4 equals 36. Subtract my 4. And we are left with 2x equals 32. Yes, answer is x equals 16. And then we try that inside and make sure that it works. Okay, questions at this point. So now what we've done is we've added a couple different steps. Mr. Duke's class. Uh, okay, now we're going to talk about a domain. What does that mean to state the domain? Who remembers what this meant earlier when we covered it? Uh, Mark. Isn't it range? Okay, where is the range? Yes. What can x equal? What is the rule? The, the rule, not the rule. The rule for x. Remember, we have a rule for fractions, and we have a rule for radicals. What's the big rule for fractions? Lisa? You can't have a zero in the denominator. No zero in the denominator. What's the big rule for radicals? Yes. There can't be a negative inside the radical. There can't be a negative. So when we're looking at the domain, we look at x is allowed to be any real number, any number out of the real number system, and x must be what? Greater than or equal to oh, zero. 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 Now, I don't know if Mr. Duke shows it like this. This just means x is an element of the reals, meaning x is a real number. Any real number except x must be greater than or equal to 0. Okay. Okay, so let's try the next one. We're basically every time, if it's a radical, we have to set it to greater than or equal to zero. Is there a radical in number two? Is there a radical in number two? Uh, yes. Okay, so we are doing um, x plus five, set it equal to greater than or equal to zero. Okay? That means this whole entire chunk right here Oops, this whole thing right here Oh dear. Okay, sorry about this. Okay, and I keep going back beyond it. Okay, this whole part right here that says x plus 5 Whatever's inside there, that has to be bigger than zero. Okay? So, I set it equal to, I solve for the x, you know, sub do the inverse operation, subtract 5 on both sides, x must be greater than negative 5. Ne any, it can be any number it's a, that's in a real number that is bigger than negative 5. 
Okay? Questions? Okay. All right, next one. What is x allowed to be for this next one? Anybody? What do you think? Mo Moses. Anything. Because any negative number or any positive number, if x is any negative number, when we square it, it's going to be a positive. If it's a, net, a positive number, it's still going to be positive. So in this case, x can be any real number. Number four, we're going to do basically the same thing. Set it to, what am I setting it to? Yes. Greater than or equal to zero. Greater than or equal to zero. And then I solve for the x. So x must be greater than or equal to three. All right, now we're going to use this. Oh, wait. Let's mix up the rules. What's the rule here for number five? Devin. Uh, well, the, uh, you know, x, x over x is uh, greater than or equal to zero. Is this a radical? No. Remember, that was the rule for the radicals. What kind of problem is this? What is this a math problem? Yes. <laughs> Shh. X cannot equal to zero. It's a fraction. Shh. Shh. Okay. All right. So in number five, it's a fraction. So we cannot have. We cannot have a zero in the denominator. That's the domain. X can be any real number, but X cannot equal zero. And look how I write that. X cannot equal. That is the not equal sign. Number six, what's the domain? Number six, yes. Any real number and X cannot equal to four. Six. Oh, six, sorry. Um, any real number any and... Any real number and the 7x has to be greater than 0, which would mean x, x is, is greater than or equal to 0 over 7. Perfect. Zero, just 0. Right? When I set it equal to 0, when I solve it, I end up with 0. Okay? Yes? Wait, but I thought you could have a 0 in your radical. You can. Have you can. X must be greater than or equal to 0. Oh, it can be a negative. Can't be a negative. Okay, number seven, what's the rule? The rule. Anybody? Let's go, Isaac. X uh, cannot be four. And X can be? Any real number. Any real number, but except for four. X is an element of the reals, and X cannot equal four. Is that making sense? So we're, the number eight is basically the same. We set it equal to zero, greater than or equal to zero, and we say x is an element of the reals and x cannot equal eight. Can you solve number seven? Can we what? Can you just like show what you do for number seven? Um, the only thing is, if you wanted to set this, the the rule for number seven is that x minus four is not allowed to equal zero, right? That denominator. So add four, add four, so x cannot equal four. Because I can't have a zero in the denominator. You don't have to deal with the numerator though, here. No, just only the denominator. No, don't even deal with the denominator. Okay, so now we're gonna use it. Equations with extraneous solutions. Here they come. An extraneous solution is obtained by squaring both sides of an equation that does not satisfy the original equation. Meaning, whatever answer I get, when I put it back to the original equation, it doesn't work. Okay, so let's look at radical x plus 9. What would I do to solve this? Um, mark? Subtract 9. I get radical x equals negative 9. How do I get rid of the radical? Um, Devin? You square it. Square both sides. I get x is equal to 81. Now, 
Watch quick, carefully. Watch carefully. Okay. Once they substitute that in, square root of 81 is what? Nine. 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 And nine plus nine is? Does that equal zero? It's 18, so it doesn't work. So, but we should have had a hint at another point in this equation that this was not going to work. What line showed us that it was not going to work, Devin? Uh, negative. The negative Okay. Lizzie, can you be more specific? Well, the third line. The square third line. Root square root of x. Square root of x mm. equals negative 9. Right here, we can see the problem. Because there's nothing... No, nothing that you can take a square root that you would get a negative. Remember that rule? There's no number I would take the square root that I would get a negative. Because a negative times a negative is equal to a positive. All right, so now let's try it. What would we need to do to solve for x? Um, how about Gwen? What do you think? My, my Gwen, what do I do to solve? What would, what would I do here? What would be the first step? Is the 3... Okay, but wait a second. The 3 is inside the radical. I only do that when it's outside of the radical. The radical is alone. How do I get rid of a radical sign? We're going to square it. So I square first. Okay, and then what am I left with? Emma. 2x plus 3 equals x squared. <gasps> 2x plus 3 equals x squared. Next step. Um, Scout. Now, this is tricky. Watch this. What would you do? Well, I was going to say you should do it in a radical, but then I'm just going to react Okay. You close. Now you have two methods to solve. What do you think, Moses? Uh, you subtract x squared and then you I don't think I would subtract x squared. I'd subtract the other side. Oh, yeah, to make so that you could uh, factor it. Okay. So subtract the 2x, subtract the 3, and look what I'm left with. A trinomial. What? So what would I do to factor that? Um... Pardis. Okay, and what would that factor to? What multiplies to negative 3 adds to negative 2? Um, Jeff? Um, <laughs> it multiplies to negative 3 and adds to negative 2. Tyler. Negative 3 and positive 1. Okay, and so my solutions are what? Um, Pardis. Okay, and now here's where we have to check our solutions. So, substitute them in. So, 2 times negative 1 plus 3 is equal to negative 1. Right there, we should see something. Will the square root of anything equal a negative? Never. So that's not a solution. When I simplify it, we can see I'm never going to get it to equal a negative. So that's not a solution. It doesn't work. Sometimes you could get two that don't have a solution. Okay, I substitute this in. It actually works. So the only solution to this problem is x equals 3. It can't be a negative. It cannot be a negative if it's equal to a radical. Huh? When you substitute it back in. Okay, questions? Okay, one more slide. Let's try it one more time. Why don't you guys try the next one? Okay. Okay? Yeah. So you guys try this one. Go. You got it. Go. We square both sides. Yeah. Okay, and what do I get, Maddie? You get the next step. You do um, x plus 20 equals x 
Perfect. Next step, someone I haven't heard from. Okay, Jeff, I'll try you again. Um, you would subtract 20 of all sides. Subtract 20 and subtract what? How about the X? The X. Okay, <laughs> subtracting both parts. <laughs> Okay, and so now I'm left with x squared minus x minus 20. Okay, yes. <coughs> so we're going to factor that. Okay, and what multiplies to negative 20 and adds to negative 1? She, you said what? I said negative 5. Negative 5 and negative 4. Negative five. Positive 5, negative 4, that's right. No, negative, negative 5, five positive negative 4. Negative 5, positive 4. That's what I said. All right. So, and now which one works? Do both of them work? Yes. No. No. So, negative 4 plus 20 equals negative... No, negative 4 plus 20 equals 16 for 16. So, when I try the negative 4, when I try the negative 4, it doesn't work. Isn't it negative if you do it the other way, then it becomes negative 5 with a negative No, 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 no. Shh. Now, remember, when I was doing the factoring, here we go. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so when we're here, Estrella, your question was, and I'm, and I'm multiplying, factoring this, okay? And we said, what multiplies to negative 20 and adds to negative 1? We came up with negative 5 and positive 4. So this is going to be x minus 5, x plus 4. But the solutions... Remember, I have to set them both equal to 0. x minus 5 equals 0. x plus 4 equals 0. What would set this true? Five, five. Positive 5. So x equals positive 5 and x equals negative 4. Does that make sense? Okay. So now we check our solutions, and that's where we see our negative 4 does not work. But our positive 5 does, and that's the end.